Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of What's Up Dr. Dovek. You guessed it, I'm Betsy Dovek, and I can't wait to have a conversation with one of my most trusted colleagues and friends, and that is Dr. Michael Asike from the GI department here at GBMC. And today we are gonna talk about a lot of things that I know a thing or two about, and that is bariatric surgery and how we collaborate with the GI department. So um, without further ado, Mike, welcome to our program. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, awesome. So you are a gastroenterologist, and that's a little bit of an intimidating word. Um, it's a mouthful there. But speaking of mouth, I know that you treat everything from the mouth to the anus, and you have a special um, interest in bariatric surgery. So tell our listeners here, um, if they've gotten a referral from me to see you, what types of things can they expect? What would you do for them, the procedures, all of that good stuff? Let's dive in. Yeah, so as a GI specialist, gastroenterology GI for short, um, we deal with anything in the upper digestive tract to, to, to lower bowels. Um, and specifically with bariatric surgery, um, we're more interested in the foregut, the stomach, the esophagus, and, and the proximal small intestine um, <clears throat> to, to basically see if there's any abnormalities or pathologies. Um, we can either see a patient pre-surgery or, or, or post-op. So um, a lot of issues that, that may affect people with surgery could include acid reflux um, or, or stomach pain that, that, that's not necessarily explained. So we can help to identify certain things that may help with the bariatric surgeon as to deciding what surgeries they may be able to get. So let's, um, let's back up. So if you're out there and you're an interested patient in having weight loss surgery, otherwise known as bariatric surgery, uh, we are accepting new patients and you can go to gbmc.org slash weight loss and click on get started now. So once you get there, we receive your information. We're doing 100% um, virtual visits still. We're doing telemedicine. It comes to the decision of sleeve versus gastric bypass. And you're right, we do refer to you sometimes to determine which one to help. But there's sometimes patients are so torn about which one to pick. And so then if I refer them to you and you do an upper endoscopy, what does that entail? What kind of a procedure is that? What type of anesthesia do they need? Does it hurt? What are the details? Yeah, so that's a good question. So an upper endoscopy, we use a thin, flexible scope. It has a camera and light source at the tip. Um, we generally will sedate you. We give people IV sedation. Um, it's similar to what you would get if you get a colonoscopy for those who've had colonoscopies before. This is an outpatient procedure. Um, there is no pain associated with it. You're, you're asleep the entire time. Um, we don't require any kind of uh, preparation. Just don't eat breakfast that morning. So we, we put this flexible tube with a camera down into the stomach. What we're looking for primarily, we're looking for any kind of inflammation in the esophagus that could suggest in, uh, reflux, acid reflux, um, obviously ulcers, peptic ulcers in the stomach. Um, those would be the big things that we're looking for. So they make the big decision and let's say that they decide on the sleeve gastrectomy. So if you're watching, you can always Google what it looks like, but in essence, what we're doing with that surgical procedure is we do it minimally invasive through little tiny incisions, and we take the stomach from the size of a football down to the size of a garden hose. So your anatomy, mouth to anus, is always the same, but I'm removing about 80% of your stomach. So your stomach is now smaller, it holds smaller amounts of food. There are some hormonal changes by removing that 80%, and therefore the ghrelin levels are decreased, so it also gives you more satiety with less amounts of food as well. So they have the sleeve and uh, let's say they come back in and now they are experiencing some acid reflux symptoms. Uh, what do you do for the workup? Because if my patients are watching, that means I probably refer them to you and they want to know, oh boy, I have this sleeve and this reflux. What are you going to do to me now? Yeah. So the reflux after surgery is not uncommon <clears throat> because once two thirds of the stomach has been removed, um, the accommodation or stretch of the stomach may initially be off for the first couple of months. So that reflux could actually get better. Um, in, in a lot of people, we could just try medicines for a few months to see if that helps and, and to try to get them off. But for people who are having a lot of issues with reflux or even despite medications, 
Then I would recommend an endoscopy at that point, which is that procedure that I, I mentioned earlier, um, primarily looking to see if there's any irritation or damage to the lining of the esophagus from reflux. Um, and in some instances, depending on, on how someone presents, I may do a pH study, so I may actually measure the amount of acid exposure in the, in the esophagus, because that will help determine you know, what the next steps are in terms of do we continue with medical management, treatment with a, a medication to, to suppress the acid, or do we think of other procedures? Tell me more about that pH study that you referred to. So how, how do you measure the pH of the esophagus? Yeah, that's a good question. So what we do is we do a regular endoscopy. We first get a, a lay of the land and we get our markings and we attach a, a little capsule the size of a large pill. So if anyone has had an 800 milligram Motrin or any kind of uh, potassium pill, uh, we, we attach this via suction to the lining of the esophagus. And this is a pretty sensitive and sophisticated uh, uh, device where it can send information wirelessly to a monitor that you're gonna carry with you for two days. The monitor is small. It could fit in a, in a, in a purse, in a medium-sized purse. Um, and you're able to eat, drink normally. Um, the vast majority of people don't have any sensation of this capsule. I do warn people about 10% of the time, some people may have some chest pressure for a few days, but that gets better. Um, so this, this device will send information wirelessly for 48 hours. So we're interested in a 48 hour window to see how much acid exposure you have, because everyone is gonna have physiologic acid reflux, especially after eating, that's normal. But what we're looking for is an abnormal acid exposure or prolonged acid exposure. Um, the device or the capsule falls off and you pass it in your system. You just have to bring our monitor back so we can analyze it. Got you. I actually didn't realize that's how you put it down. Um, I knew it was endoscopy. I didn't realize you just, you, you, by suction, you put it there to the esophagus. Yeah, so after, we, after we, do, we do the endoscopy, we have a little catheter device, and we put that in blindly um, with, our, with our hands. But once we've made anatomic markings with the endoscope, we confirm that it's in the right position by putting the scope back. And, and, we, and we, we basically deploy the suction to suck it onto the esophagus. Wow, that is so cool. Um, well, interesting. And so let's say um, somebody does have a pathologic or abnormal amounts of acid reflux. Do you do any procedures um, that are anti-reflux at this time? No, we don't. So this is something that we're thinking about um, performing here. We don't have the equipment yet. Um, that's something that we're in the capital stages of, of investigating to see if it's something that we'll offer. Um, but, but if someone is interested in, in an endoscopically, uh, endoscopic, uh, therapy for reflux, we do know who to refer to. Got you. So what would that, what would that entail? And would a patient who's had a sleeve gastrectomy, who no longer has a fundus, because there is something called a Nissen fundoplication that you could do. So that is not a surgical option. Is there an endoscopic option for somebody that had a sleeve and now has reflux? Yes, there is. It becomes a little bit more difficult once they've had surgery, um, but, but there are some endoscopic options available. Um, one is a Lynx procedure where, where you can attach some basically uh, metal magnets around the esophagus, and that helps to, to close the, the sphincter muscle a little bit tightly. Um, some people are even doing um, some sort of ablation where they use a type of laser and they ablate the lower part of the esophagus and that also helps to, to tighten the, the sphincter muscle. Got you. Now let's say you're doing this endoscopy, you're doing a workup and you said you're looking for esophagitis or any other evidence of reflux. But let's mm -hmm. say you find something called Barrett's esophagus. I see that sometimes on your reports. What is Barrett's esophagus? What does it look like and what does it mean? So Barrett's is, is a permanent change to the lining of the lower part of the esophagus from chronic inflammation. So the GI tract, or the GI mucosa, that's the lining, is always going to want to try to repair itself in the face of irritation or damage. But if the, if the irritation or damage is a chronic thing with reflux, it's never getting itself the ability to heal, you can start developing abnormal cells. So you basically develop intestinal cells in the lining of the esophagus. Now this condition itself is benign, but it is considered a precancerous process, meaning that 
if left unchecked, it has the potential to turn into cancer. And the insidious thing about Barrett's esophagus is, other than the acid reflux symptoms, Barrett's does not cause any symptoms itself. So that's why it's one of the leading causes of esophageal cancers um, in the U.S. So if we see Barrett's esophagus, this is someone who we need to be a little bit more aggressive with, with treating their acid reflux. Absolutely. So let's say, um, as you know, if I have a patient, I will send them directly to you. I'll make sure they have your phone number. They'll contact your office. They'll get on your books. Um, maybe you'll even do a, decide to do a procedure on them. But let's say somebody else that's watching, um, maybe they didn't have bariatric surgery and they, they like you and they know that they maybe need their screening colonoscopy or they have another um, GI issue, um, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fatty liver disease, those sorts of things, because I do send to you for that as well. Um, how, how would a patient best get started with you and your practice? Yeah, so, you know, for if it's just for screening colonoscopies, they could call directly and get scheduled for the procedure itself. If they're having any kind of symptoms, you know, oftentimes we would like to see them in the office first to see what the best pathway in terms of working them up is, um, because it could be as simple as just some dietary modification, lifestyle modifications, or if we need to do any kind of diagnostic testing and or treatment. So to call our office, we're pretty accessible. There, we have uh, four, four, four other physicians, um, and we have nurse practitioners, but um, kind of uh, advanced practitioners who can see them in the office as well. We work in collaboration. That's fantastic. I mean, you guys are very well known for your multidisciplinary team, your comprehensive approach, um, fantastically beautiful, brand new facilities at the Crow Center. Um, it's, a, it's a great place uh, to be and work, and it's, it's very impressive for a community hospital. Um, and that being said, I mean, you, you're a military guy. Uh, you've um, done a lot of training all over the country, um, some very impressive um, different places. You've done your internal medicine residency or your gastroenterology or GI fellowship. So what brought you to Towson, Maryland? How did you end up here? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, uh, my wife brought me here. That's the, that's the <laughs> short and skinny. Um, we met in, in residency when I was doing my internal medicine. She's actually was in the Air Force and she's an anesthesiologist. Um, once we got married in 2011, we we're both still in the military and I was stationed at Walter Reed um, down in Bethesda, Maryland, and I did my, my fellowship there. And she was at University of Maryland Shock Trauma as part of a, a collaborative program between the Air Force and the, Air, and the and University of Maryland. She got out a year before I did, and she says, you need to get out of the military also. So the following year I did as well, and we liked the Baltimore area. Um, I was commuting to Bethesda, so it was nice to be able to, to stay in the Baltimore area once I got out of the military. And that's the, that's the short and skinny. And so far, we've liked Baltimore. It's a nice city. Yeah, I mean, that's what really attracted me to you and to referring my patients to you is that you, you do still have a very um, systematic, thorough, meticulous process. Your notes that you write me, your documentation, your attention to detail, I mean, it's superb. That's why I tell my patients, you find this guy and he is going to um, evaluate you like nobody's business. You do a fantastic job. So thank you on behalf of my patients and um, for myself. Thank you for all the care that you give to them. You know, thanks a lot. I mean, I, I've had a, a very good relationship with you and patients resoundingly love you. So that that's one common theme that I've noticed that they, they love their Dr. Dovac. <laughs> That's me. I'm the Bets. And I love, um, yeah, our patients are, they're awesome. They're special. And like you said, sometimes you help to, they, they are, they're symptomatic. And sometimes we'll start off with an upper GI swallow study done in radiology where they'll drink some contrast. And sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of a subjective edge to that um, examination where it's up to the interpretation of the radiologist that they don't really um, know what maybe we're trying to find. And it doesn't correlate with the symptoms. I send them to you. You objectively put that probe down there and you, and you help us out. Yeah, and that's a good point that you make. So the, with the barium swallow, the nice thing about it is it can assess for anything anatomic. So that's what it's actually good for. And it could suggest you know, reflux. So like I said, everyone has physiologic reflux. And even in a normal person, a barium swallow could provoke reflux that the radiologist may interpret as pathologic. So 
if there's any question, you know, someone's symptomatic, you know, just send them to us and we will evaluate without any issues. That's awesome. And you are still accepting patients and yes. um, you're accepting new patients and they're making it so easy for everyone out there. You just have to call the office 443-849-3400-3400. And when you call that number, someone will help to direct you based on what your um, symptoms are or aren't, if it's screening or not, if you're a patient of bariatrics, and I referred you there, they're going to help to get you set up the right clinician to take the best care for you. So please call 443-849-3400. So I want to end this session um, with a congratulations to you. Um, how old is your second son now? Yeah, so my second son is 13 weeks. So Woo! I'm just getting some sleep. <laughs> That's when, yeah, you get the longer stretches. It's like that three month magical time. It's sort of like when they get over, what is it, 10, 11 pounds and they finally start to sleep a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So he may, he may wake up once uh, at night and I, I have the night duty. So, oh, you do? Uh, which is fun. <laughs> which is fun. Oh, yeah, a real blast. I just loved bonding in the middle of the night when I'm sleep deprived. That was really fun. But, um, there you are. You're just a kind, cool, caring guy, even a great dad. At that, And then you have an older son, too. He's um, two and a half now. Yeah, so he, he's going to be three this month, actually. So he's, he's, uh, uh, he's getting up there. He's getting up there in age, yeah. He yeah. sure is. Um, well, that's great. It's cool that our kids can grow up together. I know that your kids go to the Montessori school. Yes, my son goes to the Montessori down uh, in a uh, uh, Greenspring, Greenspring Montessori. Yeah. So do mine. I, I, I stalk you, and I found that out. So um, I have three kids, age four, three, and two. And my four and my three-year-old, um, they go there. So um, I knew that your son was there. I saw your name yeah, on I, something. I, I heard from one of uh, the, the, the CRNAs who does surgery with you. That's the person who does your, anest your, your anesthesia. <laughs> yes, Jackie. Uh, I should mention that your, 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 your children went there. I was like, oh, my kids go there too. Yeah, so I think I'm stalking you, actually. Oh, yeah. it, it, I know. We have a lot more to discuss. And, and social media is fun. So... Follow yeah. me on Instagram. It's at Dr. Dovec, D-R-D-O-V-E-C. I'm trying to get more followers. So hopefully um, this interview, I'm, I know it's going to go viral. So um, we're going to get a surge. And uh, do you have any social media handles or anything that you want patients to go to on the worldwide? I don't. That's something that we're, our office and practices is, is seriously thinking about doing. I think, you know, we need to expand. And a lot of patients are very tech savvy. And the one thing that I do love is the MyChart uh, app. If you're a patient and you're coming to our, our practice, I'm very accessible on my chart. So if you have questions, you can directly email me and I respond within 24 hours. So that's one thing I'm good at, the, the my chart app. Well, that is, that is fantastic. So patients, you have to hear this. You download the MyChart app. It's just as easy as texting. You can do it from your phone, and then you just um, write him a question, and he'll write back. He is very, very good with, like I said, the documentation, but also the um, almost instantaneous um, back and forth. And I love the new Epic Chat feature that we can um, write to yes. each other right then, too. That's, that is the old AOL Instant Messenger brought back to life medical edition. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, so technology is moving and it's helping both the uh, physicians, providers and patients, you know, in terms of kind of a collaborative approach. So patients have a stake in their care as well. And that's you what I like. Believe to it. I love it too. Well, I just love working with you. You're an amazing colleague and friend. And I know that you're just so trusted in what you do for our patients. So thank you again. And thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. It was great. It was a lot of fun. So on behalf of um, everyone here at GBMC, we hope that you're doing well. Don't forget about those screening colonoscopies, age of 45, and GBMC GI is accepting new patients. There's no excuses, my friends. So please call 443-849-3400, and you can always sign up um, to be a patient of the fabulous Dr. Michael Asike. And, on, and for this, I'm going to sign off, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks again for watching.